Hi, I'm Jamie Keane, lead game designer on Far Cry 3, and you're watching Platform 32. Welcome to part one of this exclusive Far Cry 3 interview. Not only does it feature brand new information on a single player campaign, but there's loads of unseen gameplay footage too. Regular P32 viewers will probably know that Far Cry 3 is my most wanted game of 2012, and recently I was lucky enough to have a three hour hands on with the game and then grab an interview with Jamie Keane, the game's lead designer. So Jamie, at the very start of the game our hero Jason Brody is trapped in a cage and he's scared shitless. He's definitely not the one man army we've seen in all the trailers. What's Jason's situation right at the start of the game? Way up in the fucking skies you thought you had your finger on the pussy trigger. But Edmano, down here. Down here. Jason Brody basically he's out traveling with his friends he's out having a good time you know he's kind of like just heading out and doing some island hopping having a great time and stuff and what we really wanted to get is that sense of of you know when things suddenly go out of hand and he takes a really wrong turn and he ends up in this situation where he's really out of his depth I mean, obviously we kind of pushed it to an extreme, but it's that kind of sense of suddenly things aren't in your control anymore. And we want the sense that, you know, you recognize or you feel like you recognize elements of him in yourself, perhaps, you know, that you understand that, okay, things that have gone bad and things that have happened to him and things that have happened to his friends and his family, you know, how is he going to react to that? How would you react to that if you were put in that same situation? And then it's an exploration of, you know, how he then takes back power and how he grows and develops. Who is that? My what the fuck? Holy shit. Oh god, I can't do this, Grant. Jay, 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 look at me. I can't find Lisa and Riley and the others without you. So pull it together, okay? Okay, I'm sorry. What surprised me was how dark and vicious the storyline of the game was, especially in the opening chapter as Jason's brother Grant dies in his arms, a victim of the island's most famous villain, Vars. Is it this hellish experience that helps shape the person Jason becomes? It's, it's, it's a pretty horrific moment when, you know, and, and, and Grant literally dies in your arms. I mean, you, know, you literally feel the life ebbing out through the, through the vibration in the controller and, and it becomes a really, really important moment, as it would be for Jason in his life, you know. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really strong driver, but then he finds out that, you know, some of his other friends are still alive and he's like, right, okay, I've got to go and rescue them, I've got to get them out of this situation. In the process of doing that, though, I think it changes Jason, and he kind of gets seduced by the island, you know, he gets rescued by Dennis, and he gets taken in by the Rakyat people, and they kind of start to teach him his way, and their way of, of, of you know, fighting, and their way of, of war and combat, and things like that. And Jason gradually becomes kind of a little bit kind of seduced and a little bit pulled off by the island. And you get this really nice dynamic where, where you as the player are kind of running around and exploring the place and, and, and you know, and gaining skills and getting new weapons and having a good time and, and just sort of like exploring the place and, you know, enjoying the f in combat and things like that. And then you find friends that are dotted around the island and they've not had that experience at all. They're still those people that were at the start of the game. They've had really, really harrowing experiences and they're really shocked and surprised at what's happening to Jason. And that's really mirrored by the experience that you're having as well as as the player playing the game <laughs> I am Dennis Jason <laughs> Jamie's totally right about that once the world map opened up to me the prospect of exploring an island that size was very daunting but as I slowly learned my skills my confidence grew it's easy to see that by the finale of the game anyone playing it will have learned how to master their surroundings just like Jason has done in the story it's not a basic linear game by any means it really is you sharing in Jason's struggles and growing as a warrior with him now, right at the start of the game, I noticed a shadowy figure behind Vass who seemed to be giving him orders. I thought Vass was the main bad guy on the island, but it looks like he may have a boss. Can you tell us anything about this mysterious man? Uh, it's very well spotted, definitely. Uh, that was Hoyt, um, and he's somebody that's going to... He's going to... You're going to see more and more of him as the game develops. We don't want to go into too much detail. We don't want to give really too many spoilers and stuff, but, uh, but definitely, I mean, everybody has a boss, right? I don't. That's how I get away with my shoddy journalism. 
Anyway, I noticed something else slightly weird while I was playing, and that is that Dennis, the man who rescues Jason, is sporting an almost identical scar on his head to Vars. Is that intentional? No, that one's not actually. No, that one's just purely <laughs> coincidental. Maybe it's not meant to be. Maybe it's a bane in his But there are, no, yeah, I mean, there are certain themes that you're going to run into about, you know, characters like Dennis, characters like Vars, characters like Jason, these kind of outsiders who are not necessarily from the island and the experiences that they go through. I mean, you may have noticed as well that Vars has a tattoo on his arm. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's these three different people that have obviously gone through a similar experience on the island and you know, what does it turn them into? You know, you've got Dennis who's kind of like your helping hand and your guide, you've got Vass who's obviously the very the, the other end of the scale and what's mm. happened to him. And then you've got Jason and it's kind of like, okay, where does Jason end up in in this whole scale of things? You know, he's out there and he's killing a bunch of guys and he's he's getting this tattoo and he's kind of enjoying himself, he's kind of, you know, feeling really empowered by the whole situation and oh, how different is he from Vass at the end of the day? And, that's so, something we want to explore through the narrative in the game. Can, could you play it like would it, with the tattoos? If you played it, could you play it kind of bad and get like bad tattoos and then it more like vast or play it good? No, good that, it's it's more narratively that you that it, it's about you know what happens to Jason during the course of the journey and the, the, the tattoo is is a yes it's a reflection of the Rakiat and yes you kind of get these totem animals and you follow a path you know you got the shark the heron and the spider and they're kind of the totem animals for the Rakiat but it's also very much a gameplay thing you know it's it's about you and and how you want to play the game. Like, are you more about like going in guns blazing? Are you more about stealth? Are you more about you know maybe sitting back and sniping? You know what you want to develop, how you kind of develop those different paths, and the path that you take, the tattoo that you get will be slightly different each time. So if you're more about you know long range sniping, you're going to get a different tattoo from somebody that wants to go and do more of the stealth stuff. So it's really up to you to choose your route through it. During my hands on, I got to try out the crafting system in the game. Can you explain to my viewers how this works? <laughs> There's a couple of crafting systems that we have in the game. We have a gear crafting system, and that's all based around the hunting. So basically, if you go off and you hunt animals, you can kind of skin them, grab stuff from them, and then use that to kind of make bags, which is going to increase your inventory. So you know you can carry more weapons, carry more ammo, more wallet, uh, more you know bigger wallets, so you can carry more cash, carry more loose items. And it's very much about you kind of you know expanding your power as you as you through the, through hunting and through kind of getting this stuff. Um, also, you'll find a bunch of plants out in the world, and again, this kind of ties into the kind of you know people like the doctor and that kind of thing, where you've got like a certain amount of um, pharmacology on the island, um, and these are going to give you kind of temporary powers. These are going to give you ability to kind of like you know see enemies further away. You're going to be able to attract animals, repel animals. So you're going to get these temporary little boosts that are going to let you mess around with the kind of the systems, and and then also it's, you can craft uh, healing kits and stuff with it as well. So it's. You know, and you're going to find certain challenges in the world where you're not going to be able to make it. So that we've got, we've got one place where we've got this super deep blue cenote, which just goes down. And at the bottom of it, there's a relic that you can go and collect. And you're kind of swimming down to go and get it. And you realize about halfway down, it's like, I'm not going to make this. And then you look up and you've got about 40 meters of water above you and I'm not making that either. <laughs> so then you realize, okay, so if I craft a potion, then, I, then that means I can go and get it. And we have these little kind of lock and key gameplay challenges that's kind of scattered around the world that you can use the syringes to get. Oh, you... You mean the girl, Daisy. Oh, it was Daisy. I assumed you to be speaking in code. Where is she? Well, she's in my house. Uh, here. Want even more brand new Far Cry 3 info and gameplay footage? Then click on this annotation and jump straight to part 2 of this exclusive Far Cry 3 interview in which Jamie talks about watchtowers, the game's three skill trees and the free roaming activities available on the island. Plus I give you my verdict on my hands on with the game and it's not all gushy praise either, although it is mostly. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to Platform 32 for more Far Cry 3 coverage coming soon.